I'm back again and this is what I've been doing. I have cut all my little embroideries out and placed them where I think I might like them. I did go ahead and iron some of that interfacing onto the other side uh, just so the edges didn't fray when I stitch it on. I'm not going to do needle turn applique but I'll just be doing probably like an overcast stitch around them. Uh, they are symmetrical. I do like symmetry. I can work without it but I am naturally drawn to symmetry so you know they're the same like each thing is the same um, but you won't see them all at the one time so that's that's okay I will be doing stitching in between the blank ones as well I think I'm quite happy with that I've taken a photo so that um, I know where I would like everything and I'm about to pin things on now. So I've used some vintage ribbon as well, which I really like. So I'm just going to pin things on. And that way I can go ahead and start you know, stitching things as well. And this is where I'll find out how these pins work. So I'm using some of the newer ones and some of the clover ones. And I'm in, really enjoying this project so far. Put a couple of Suffolk puffs on there as well. Because they kind of they're, they're not the same fabric, but it's a very very similar color. So I'll go ahead and pin everything up, and then we'll do some sewing. I've stitched that one on just with a few little um, invisible stitches, and I will go around the edge of it. I'm just showing you how I'm just stitching this little piece of lace on and this is the only stitching I will do on this little piece of lace and I've just got some machine thread and just in various spots I'm just putting a stitch on that won't be seen and that will anchor it down it doesn't need too many it won't get a lot of heavy handling at all but just you know three or four stitches in each little um, scallop there should be enough to keep it where it needs to stay and then just you know, just choose a thread that won't be noticeable. And that cotton wadding is really nice to stitch in as well. So much easier than the wool wat wool batting. Um, that was a bit tough to get through in some places. And so I think this is probably the last stitch here. On that one. Uh, another one just there like that okay and that's nice and secure on I can finish that off on the back
and that way if I anchor all the little pieces down doing it this way it'll be so much easier to hold it all when it comes to embroidering around the edge of the little applique pieces um, so it's they're the only lace ones I'll have to do that too and then I'll just anchor everything down just um, you know just little stitches in places that aren't that noticeable just to keep it nice and in check and then I'll be able to do some overcast stitch around them so I'll go and anchor everything down now with these ribbons here and like that one I can tuck around the sides of the piece but this one here say I will fold that up like that I think so it's nice and neat there the top end can be folded over because the inside and outside will be stitched together but the bottom one I will just put a little hem on that one so it's nice and neat so that has all been stitched on now um, the like the lace is stitched down properly the soffit puffs they're stitched down properly the ribbons are stitched down properly it's only the um, the little embroidery pieces that have just been stab stitched into place and I've got myself a couple of embroidery threads here one in a lovely raspberry pink and one in a pale blue and I'm going to go around the embroidery pieces. So we'll start with a pink one. Let's try that again. And I'm just going to overcast. It doesn't have to be too too close together I need to get my rhythm going <laughs> once you get your rhythm going it's much better And it's just taking a stitch over the edge of the embroidery. That is all I'm doing. So it's coming out on the embroidery piece and then I'm going over the edge and into the fabric and just bringing it back up inside the embroidery. So you end up with this little overcast stitch and I'll do that all the way around maybe I should have done it a little bit bigger it's sometimes you know it takes a little bit of stitching to get your comfort going and what you want it to look like so if I have to go to the the front and undo a little bit I can redo it but we'll see We shall see. Just add a nice little bit of colour to it. I was going to do it all white and I thought, no, no. It's, it's meant to look nice and happy. And um, The other little pouch thing I made, I've used the raspberry thread around it and the blue with the blanket stitch so I'm that's why I chose those two just so it looks like they belong together okay so I'll continue around there and then I'll come back all right so that first one has been done 
And now I'm going to do a blanket stitch. I'll just start on this one here. And I'm only using two strands this time. So I've come out on the background fabric. And my first stitch is going to be directly back in into the embroidery and back out of the hole that I came out first just so I get my first stitch like that in and then I can go around and I'll probably keep this quite quite small so like that and let's see how it's looped around and that will make my little blanket stitch so I hold my thread up Take a stitch here and bring it through. And it's got a little blanket stitch there. Of course, you could just do that and loop it around like that. Whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just more comfortable when it's on a flat piece like that to hold my thread at the top and do it that way. I just, I'm used to doing that. So that's how I will do mine. So I will continue around this little embroidery, doing my little blanket stitch. I'll be able to bring it a bit closer to me as well because it's <laughs> sometimes a bit difficult when you're trying to make sure it's under the camera but you can't actually see it very well yourself so there we go I'll be back when I've done that right so that's what that one looks like with the little blanket stitch around and I thought with this one I I've got some green I thought I might do a bit of green as well that that's two strands of green already oh my that's a long piece I might need to such a long piece I might need to cut that one in half Hi. okay put that to one side maybe I could add a bit of green because that that shock of pink there tends to look a bit it's all by itself really on that piece isn't it I need to put probably something in the middle of the Suffolk puff I I did have some lovely green buttons but I think they're a bit big for that oh goodness my eyes Hurry up. There we go. We got it. Did we get it? I hope so. Yes, we got it. Okay, so what I was thinking is What I was thinking was maybe I'll just go around and do some running stitch around. Like I could, let's say I could start here. And just do. running stitches just to add a bit more color and bring, bring in the green that 
might be nice. And that way the, the dark pink won't look so odd if there's another darker colour. I'm hoping. Take one stitch at a time because of the the batting underneath. That's okay. And just do a few rows. That might look all right. I think it will. And then I'll just come out the other end. Okay, so that's got three rows around it. I think that looks better than just having the pink by itself. I could go a couple more if I wanted to. Or do I just leave it? The buttons I have are these vintage green and they're just lovely, but they're pretty dimensional. So I'm going to have to find something else, I think and put it in the middle here. Um, I'm just trying to think. You see, it might be all right with just the three rows around. I think if I keep going, it might look a bit 
much because I still want to see the blue underneath. I think that's lovely. So I can always come back and add some more rows if I feel it needs it. Okay, so that is what I'm going to be doing. I will go around this in the... I was going to do it in the raspberry, but it might be a bit much with a pink flower. Maybe I'll go around that in white because it's got the white lace. That might be all right there. And then I can add some stitching in the background there. Okay, and with this one, I'll go around with the raspberry on this one. Yeah, and then it will repeat itself. So I'll come back and show you once I've done all that. All right, so that's all done. I'll just, I'll show you this, that one, that one, and that one. I did some little V's on that one, and then that one there, and of course the other four are done the same way. Um, I think that's it for this video. The next video, we will put it all together. I'm trying to work out if when I put it together whether I want to do like a little edging stitch you know in the seam line I don't think it'll need it maybe I'll sew a couple together first and then work out whether it needs it or not but yes the next video should be the last one for this particular project so thank you for joining me I hope you've enjoyed that I've had a lot of fun doing all this stitching it is another day now so actually it's what day is it Tuesday Tuesday morning so take care everybody bye